This message is produced by TruthFromGod.com, which is one of hundreds of messages that can be read, heard, and watched at TruthFromGod.com. The Adoption Myth In the King James Version of the Bible, there are only five places where the English word adoption appears. All of them occur in three epistles written by the Apostle Paul. These verses are in Romans 8, 15, 23, 9, 4, Galatians 4, 5, and Ephesians 1, 5. In order to keep the knowledge of your true racial heritage hidden, Jew moneyized Christianism perverts these five passages uses them for the foundation upon which to build their false golden calf gospel. The Greek word which is mistranslated adoption is huiothese. It is a combination of two other Greek words. The first part is from huios which means son. The second part Contrary to corrupted traditionalism is not from the middle three letters of Titimia, which means to lay down, and is translated as such in many places with John 10:15, 17, 1337 through 38, and 1513 being a few of these. But it does come from Theos, which means God. Literally, the Greek word weathasa means sun god and not sun lay down. This sun god has to have by necessity a father god. The father determines what the sun is. If your father is Jones, then you are the son Jones, not the son Smith. The English word adoption comes from the Latin word adoption. It has no relationship with the Greek word weathiase, which never implies taking someone else's child and making it your own. Churchianity teaches that all white people are Gentile children of the devil, that if they accept Jesus, then God will adopt them, thereby making them members of his family. This teaching is contrary to all scripture and is straight out of the pit of hell. The clearest proof that the Greek word we are theos say does not mean the same thing as the English word adoption, can be found in the teachings of numerous scriptures. First, adoption is not for the Gentiles, but pertains only to God's children Elohim, his chosen people, Adamic white Israel, stated in Romans 9.4, and Galatians 4, 4 through 5. And no, the satanic Jews are not now or ever have been God's chosen people, the Israel of the Bible. Second, no one can choose to accept Jesus and get adopted. Jesus said, No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me Draw him, John 6, and 65. And this has already been predestinated by God, Ephesians 1, 5. Third, the parables of Jesus directly refute the adoption life of Christianism. In the parable of the wheat and tares in Matthew 13, 24 through 30, in 37 through 43, Jesus never insinuates that God will adopt the tares and make wheat out of them. 
but he plainly states that all tares are to be burned in the fire, even in the parable of the prodigal son, Luke 15, 11 through 32, the rebellious boy does not change fathers, but returns to the same father he left. At no time did the rich father adopt a wayward boy from the devil and make him his own child. God is not so impotent that he has to adopt his children from the devil. The Adamic white Israel race is Elohim. They are the only racial children of Yahweh. What then is we ought to say? It is when an individual's development reaches maturity, adulthood, which is what the Bible calls perfection. It is the time when an adolescent becomes an adult. It is the coming of age of a child. And as an adult, has the same privileges as the parents. We ought to say is when the child of God grown into perfected mature adulthood, has received his God sonship, and has all the authority of his parent, the Father Yahweh. God has predestinated us, Ephesians 1 5, that we are to receive this God sonship. Galatians 4.15 Because we are Elohim, the Israelites, to whom pertaineth this God sonship. Romans 9.4 We groan within ourselves, waiting for the God sonship. Romans 8.23 And we have received the spirit of the God sonship whereby we cry, Abba, Father, Romans 8, 15. At the time that God placed his seed, his son, Luke 3, 38, into the earth, he gave him a unique racial feature is why he is called the Adam. He was able to show blood in the face, was able to blush, this characteristic is only true of the Adam's descendants, the white western people. Genesis 5.3 says that the Adam passed this likeness and image onto his son Seth. 1 John 1.15 says, God is light. And his race, the Elohim in flesh bodies, bears this physical image of light by being white. Not only does this unique physical trait identify who is God's racial family, Elohim, in the earth, but it also points to the image they will bear after maturing into perfected sun gods. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 49, that as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. All the creation is waiting for the showing forth of these sun gods. Romans 8, 19. This is not dependent upon church membership, profession of faith, baptism, or any of the numerous things promoted by Christianism, it has been predestinated by God that we shall bear his heavenly image for whom he did foreknow. He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, Yahweh Shoah, Romans 8.29. There is an abundance of scripture which states that Jesus, the anointed Yahweh Shua, is the image of the invisible God. And a few of these are Colossians 1.15 and 
and 19, 2 through 9. 2 Corinthians 4, 4. Hebrews 1, 3. And John 1, 1. Jesus was very aware that he was the expressed image of God. This is one reason the Jews sought to kill him because he said that God was his father, making himself equal with God, John 5, 18. Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead bodily, Colossians 2, 9. And we are predestinated to be conformed to his image. We are therefore to have this same fullness of the Godhead bodily. This may sound strange after being vaccinated with the poison of denominational dogma, but the truth is stranger than fiction. We are also to be made equal with Yahweh Shua. Jesus was raised again for our justification, Romans 4.25. Justification is translated from the Greek word dikaios, which is a compound form from deka, meaning true, and eos, meaning equal. Dikaios literally means true equality. Even the English word justification has this same meaning. As you read the lines of text printed in most publications, have you noticed that they are all the same length? Normally, plain typed lines vary in length, but printers have a process whereby they make each line equal in length. This process is called justification. It should not shock you to find out that your destiny is to be truly equal with Jesus, Yahweh Shua. He is our brother, Romans 8, 29, and Hebrews 2, 11 through 12 and 17. And Yahweh is our father, Matthew 6, 9, Romans 8, 15, 1 Corinthians 1, 3, and Galatians 4, 6. It is normal for a young child to have an exalted view of his big brother and father. But after that child reaches mature adulthood, then he is truly equal, justified to his brother and father. God has predestinated that we, Elohim, should grow up, bear his image, and be justified to him. We must not fear the future, nor the alien powers that the devil see Jews will raise against white western man, for we have a glorious destiny. Nothing can make void the predestinated plan of our Father Yahweh, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called them he also justified, and whom he justified. Them he also glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us. Who can be against us? Romans 8, 29 through 31. Paul's definition. According to the scriptures, we are is not taking from another and making it your own. Remember, Paul is the only one in the Bible that uses the Greek word, which is mistranslated into the English word adoption. 
praise Yahweh. That Paul defines this word in Romans 8, 23, when he says that we are waiting for the we are the say, mistranslated adoption, which is the redemption of our body. Nothing more, nothing less. So even in this verse, the English word adoption can never be construed as to having anything to do with making someone else's child your own. It is the redemption of our body. Now, when you hear church cocks lie about what adoption is, remember that it is the redemption of our body. And no, churchism does not have a clue about redemption either. But we ought the say is when we are conformed to the image of the anointed, when we are perfected, when we are demonstrating that Son God fullness in all its glory. Read the eighth chapter of Romans and discover that this we ought the say is only for God's racial children, Elohim, in the earth. Because the white western people are the only ones predestinated for this, that the whole creation groans and travails in pain until we have grown up and have been transformed through perfection into the adult son of God. All praise, honor, and glory to our Father Yahweh. And Yahweh show up the first begotten from the dead and of many Elohim brethren. This message is produced by truthfromgod.com which is one of hundreds of messages that can be read, heard, and watched at truthfromgod.com.